Good morning. These early sessions are tough, huh? <laughs> Welcome to the uh, first ever Politicon. This is something else. I've really been enjoying myself a lot. Kind of like Comic-Con, but instead of the Hulk, you get Ann Coulter. And a couple of guys who look like they... How you doing, sir? Is everything all right? You're not... What are you, special forces? What's happening here? Are you here, what are you, are you here to uh, protect something or take something over? Or? Yeah, everybody here. All right, just making sure everything's cool. <sighs> Laughter's the best medicine, folks. And if you have Obamacare like me, it's the only medicine you can afford right now, so... It's good that we get a double dose tonight. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Mixing comedy and politics. Say whatever you want about our president, Barack Obama, but he has really broken down barriers for people of color because we might have our first orange president next year. <laughs> if Donald Trump becomes president, that's proof that the Illuminati does not exist. We have to make America great again. We're all losing, we gotta be winning. Who writes his campaign speeches? Charlie Sheen five years ago? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I watched those Republican debates. It looks like the auditions for Ron Burgundy, Anchorman 3. <laughs> But that's all right, because Kanye says he's going to run for president. Which is, means maybe he'll get assassinated. Who knows? Uh, oh, stop. Don't fucking repeat that joke. This is just for us here at Politicon. Way to go, John. Way to put the con in Politicon. John Max is here, one of the founders of this whole event. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. It's all about taking chances, whether it's politics or comedy. The riskiest joke I ever told, I wrote with John on the phone. Do you remember? We were roasting... We were roasting Jerry Lewis. Um, and it was uh, at the Friars Club, so kind of anything goes, but it was the one time ever they said, if you don't mind, you know, it wasn't directly from Jerry, but you kind of know, like, they said, you know, Jerry's very sensitive, right? You know, no jokes about muscular dystrophy or Jerry's kids or anything. I said, no problem. So we talked on the phone, and do you remember how long it took us to get there? Just seconds. <laughs> I said, John, I want to say a joke that Jer even Jerry, can, Jerry Lewis can laugh at. I want it to cross the line, but not cross, just push it a little bit. But I want it to just push the line where even Jerry has to laugh at it. And I said, you know, folks, it was a Friars Club, a thousand people, and Jerry Lewis, living legend. I said, a lot of people make fun of Jerry Lewis. I love Jerry Lewis. I said, what about the good things that Jerry Lewis does? What about the fact that just this past Labor Day, a six-year-old kid got up out of his wheelchair and walked for the very first time to turn off the Jerry Lewis television. <laughs> and I have a picture on my refrigerator of Jerry Lewis cracking up at that chair. <laughs> How you guys doing over here? What time's the electrical fire supposed to break out? Love the L.A. Convention Center. Looks like they shot Planet of the Apes outside. <laughs> like this futuristic, weird building. I'm from New Jersey, where we have our uh, governor, Krispy Kremes, running for president. <laughs> Everybody's like, you think Chris Christie can run for president? I'm not sure he can walk for president. <laughs> How 
How do you fit a round president in an Oval Office? I did a show once, Chris Christie was in the front row. I said I'd be remiss if I didn't first address the elephant in the room. <laughs> Which is a fat joke and a Republican joke if you think about it. <laughs> but he was a good sport. He ate two peanuts out of my hand, so. <laughs> you guys made me feel so good. I had a weird date the other night. This chick was not into my Bill Cosby impression. <laughs> Why is the coffee making you sleepy? <laughs> I put the roofie in the pudding. <laughs> it's heartbreaking. My comedy hero when I was a kid, Bill Cosby. All those years, Bill Cosby was like, hey, hey, hey. All those poor women were like, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> the fuck? But I said this to those people incarcerated in Texas that Teray mentioned. I said, you know, Bill Cosby will never go to jail because he's rich. It's the poor people that go to jail in America. Right now, there's people in prison in America for possession of less marijuana than I have in my lungs right now. <laughs> so when they asked me to come here to Politicon where there's some people who, I don't know, might change people's opinions or people that are curious, I thought that would be something I would be interested in. In my show, which we screened here today, it was exhilarating for me to see uh, a common experience. There was people who had gone to jail watching the movie with people who were judges. There were young people, old people, there were people there who told me they uh, illegally download Comedy Central in China, risking their life, basically, their freedom for a laugh, and I go, America, we say we're a free country, but we have more people locked up than anywhere else in the world. So maybe if I could go to this Politicon and see what it's all about, and maybe not find all the answers, but keep asking the questions, maybe I'll feel a little more uh, proud of what I'm doing. So that's why I came here. Uh, one out of a hundred, thank you. One out of a hundred Americans is in jail right now, today. 90% of them are gonna come out and be our neighbors. So if you meet somebody who's been to jail, try not to stigmatize them. I went there and I found out for the first time that these are real people living inside these orange jumpsuits and they often are very bad people, but most of the time they're just people who kind of fucked up along the way. They were desperate, they were scared, they need a second chance. Sometimes they're crazy, sometimes they get worse when they go to jail. So maybe this should be at the top of the issues. This and gun control, in my opinion, are the two. They're related, very closely related. So. If you have any influence at all here, uh, please pass that on to the world. Uh, we have to not lock up so many people for nonviolent offenses, and we have to take care of the people who are locked up. Uh, thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your show. Good. Jeff Ross, everybody. Give it up for Jeff Ross. He's growing up so nicely. So I've had an incredible day at Politicon. Thank you so much 